We're not yet done with the reactions of the allegations against the Chief Justice of Nigeria by the Code of Conduct Bureau. Let's get more perspectives from a senior advocate of Nigeria, Paul Ananaba. He joins us from Abuja Studios. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming to us at this time. Let me get your thoughts. When you heard this, what was your immediate <coughs> reactions, the allegations against the CGN, and uh, the partic particularly uh, the trial, which is expected to begin on Monday? Well, the, 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 the first is that uh, it comes as a concern and a shock uh, if, you, if you realize that the CGN is not uh, just a judicial officer, but the head of the judiciary. Uh, we didn't hear much about any antecedent of this. And um, if what the charges, as you put up, and as we've seen in the uh, social media, is correct that the petition was written on the 7th and that um, it uh, was received by uh, the Code of Conduct by on the 9th and by the 10th there's a charge. Um, then it gives a bit worry to people like uh, uh, people of legal minds. Well, what are we talking about? The issue is not about, as I heard um, a brother speak a few minutes ago, uh, whether there is um, rule of law or not. This question is, we have passed through this road before. The judgment of the uh, Court of Appeal in Justin Gajiwa's case is very clear that a serving judicial officer uh, um, cannot be prosecuted uh, in this manner. Uh, the Constitution provides for what should be done for in the event a, 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 a judicial officer is erring. And the, the, the position is that the matter should be reported to a, a NJC, and then NJC will make appropriate recommendations and all that. And then uh, prosecution, investigation by agencies can take place. So, um, the, the further worry about it is that we are very close to very vital elections. And one of those elections will be a presidential election. And the CJN must, uh, is the CJN that has the powers to uh, oversee and um, appoint panels and all that for in the event there's a, there's a presidential election petition. So uh, you ask me what, what uh, were my reactions. All these came to my mind and I, I was a bit worried that um, that is happening now. So, so what I'm saying is that the timing, the due process by the Constitution, and uh, one of the early elementary principles of law is that it is what the uh, courts say that is the law, not just what uh, the legislator has done by way of uh, acts of parliament or be laws that is the law. It is the interpretation given to those laws that is the law. And that interpretation will, will be done by the judiciary. And in this instance, the, the, the court of appeal decision on Justin Ganjiwa is very clear. Um, I think that um, uh, some degree of rethink should be done on this um, so that um, uh, nobody should, nobody is above the law. There's no immunity. If, if, if you allow me to, uh, in this to interject, just so I can yes. get uh, some more uh, questions across to yes. you. The, the chairman of the Presidential yes. Advisory Committee, uh, Professor Issa Sege, yes. uh, said that uh, uh, no one is above the law, really, uh, even though there is yes. a, a this, this is just... Uh, I agree. These are just charges that have been read to the CGN. He says yes. that no one is above the law. Shouldn't the Code of Conduct Bureau, uh, Tribunal, or the Bureau itself, still carry on with its, with its work? No, I'm not saying they shouldn't carry on, carry on with their work. But, but we are talking about the Chief Justice of the Federation. That's the point I'm making. And I'm saying that if this was done before the Court of Appeal decision in Justice Nganjiwa's case, then it can be understood. But if the law as of today is that a judicial officer, not even the CJN, any judicial officer you want to prosecute, you will have to report that judicial officer first to NJC. That is the position of our constitution 
as interpreted in Justin Gajiwa's case. If that is the case, I will believe that uh, my brother still, uh, um, uh, Professor Strage, will look at that position of the law, that, that judicial interpretation. Now, now, rule of law, rule of law is rule of law according to the law and constitution of the country. And as it is today, that is how a judicial officer can be uh, 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 can be prosecuted or uh, proceeded against. And in, in Justice Ngajiwa's case, the Court of Appeals said that it is that that position is is the glory and cover of the judicial officer, so that people who are frivolous or unserious minded will not heap all kinds of uh, charges against judges. And remember, there is need for the in, for the independence of the judiciary for both the elections to be to be sacrosanct uh, that, and for be, the fight against corruption. That, so that will be a good what I'm saying is, let it rest. is that my apologies, nobody is above the law. My apologies, I'm afraid that uh, uh, that's where we're going to have to Justice let it Sir rest. Morgan and uh, be proceeded as I believe we will still have another forum to uh, discuss further on this. But I must thank you indeed, uh, Paul Ananaba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, for sharing uh, your thoughts with us on these very contentious issues that we're seeing uh, concerning the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen. <laughs>